Right, so we are now officially the longest serving Chelsea manager since Claudio Ranieri and we are the longest serving person appointed by Roman Abramovich. Not that he really had any say in the matter. My point is, the law of averages isn't in our favour. We've had a cracking start of the season, so let's finish it in style and secure our job for at least one more year. What is the record for Manager of the Month wins? Right, Sir Alex Ferguson, obviously, with 27. Well, we've got 19 already, and we've not even done four seasons yet. Kai Havertz gets Player of the Month as well. We begin 2025 against Bournemouth, looking to maintain our 11-point lead. Man United hit seven, and so do we. Another utterly brutal display. It's January, of course, and there's a bit of business. Song Chen joins from Kukureci in Serbia for 2.3 million, and with 21 caps for China already. He will apparently increase our shirt sales as well, which is nice. We've also sold Ethan Ampadu to Porto for £25 million. We have a lot of centre-backs coming through and he was always moaning, so I feel this made sense. We beat Cardiff 2-0, although we lose Tino Livramento for six weeks. He really deserves some credit. He's just an insanely good backup fullback who always plays well, so this sucks. The second 11 thump Millwall in the FA Cup third round. I would like a treble if possible, please. That would be good. And again, what is with the delusions of these lower league managers? We then have Manchester City again, who for now are in second place. We're certainly the worst for wear, with Christensen and Mbappe both injured, and Mendy, unfortunately, at the African Cup of Nations. I'm not risking playing Kepa, though. After a nothing first half, we win a penalty, which Lukaku converts. As City press forward, a brutal counter sees Hudson Odoi set up Lukaku for an excellent second and then he goes and completes his hat-trick. City do score two late goals, but we never really see him in danger and secure another excellent win. Manchester United lose to Brentford as well, so basically we're in a very, very strong position. We then have to play Liverpool again though, but Mbappe is back, and he certainly makes up for lost time. Some beautiful control sees him open the scoring. He then plays an exquisite ball over the defence for Lukaku to blast home another incredible finish. Lukaku adds a third with a sublime header before Ziyech makes it four and Mason Mount adds the coup de grace from the spot. United and Arsenal then draw so we move 18 points clear. It's January and we only need eight more wins. This is like how two seasons ago should have been. I mean, at what point do we just stop including these in the video? I guess it wouldn't be the same without it. It also wouldn't be the same without us beating Spurs. Both centre-half score in a 3-1 win this time. And there's no slip-up in our FA Cup title defence as we see off Swansea in round four. Lukaku grabs two as we get another win against Leicester to move to 73 points. The league is looking very good, but what about Europe? Well, Barcelona are, of course, our opponents, and it's the away leg first. We make a fast start and a beautiful whip ball across from Hudson Odoi is dispatched perfectly by Mbappe. They repeat this move shortly after, but Havertz this time hits the post. Reese James's cross is then right on the money and can only be turned in for an own goal before Mendy makes an excellent save. But in the second half, Barca hit back. Sloppy defending allows Memphis to pie to make it 2 1 before Trincao gets an equaliser. We have one last push though as Hudson Odoi finds Tammy Abraham who fires home to win the game. Jao Cancelo then gets himself suspended for the second leg, where will have a slender advantage. Lukaku then gets over his absolutely baffling playing time concerns as Man United lose. A Christensen header is all we need for a win at Leeds, meaning we need, I think, four wins? Oh look, yes, that thing again. The other managers must really hate me, and understandably so. We see off Brighton for yet another win, 3-0 this time. We're just too damn good. The whole squad is, more or less. The second 11 beat Sheffield United 2-0 to see his progress to the FA Cup quarterfinals. And then another brutal display crushes West Ham. That sees a secure Champions League qualification already with 117 million to spend. We move to within two wins of the title given our massively superior goal difference. But it's Europe that really still eludes us. At 3-2, the tie with Barcelona is finally poised. So it's great to be gifted an early second leg goal from an absolute howler from Ter Stegen. The Hudson Odoi and Mbappe combination does the trick again for two as we take full control before allowing Ansu Fati to pull them closer once again. Mbappe plays the ball into Lukaku's head for another though, but Barca then hit back with a wonder strike from Ousmane Dembele. It doesn't matter in the end though as we hold on for a 3-2 win and a 6-4 win overall. We then get probably our weakest seeming youth intake for a few years. We're pretty well stocked already though. A Lukaku penalty gives us a 1-0 win over Burnley to take us within one win of the title. 17 wins in a row now. It's a total procession again, so sorry if that's boring. Oh, and here we are. I knew things were going too well. Of course, we have to play an English side in the Champions League knockouts. We face West Ham again in the FA Cup quarterfinals, and we're 5-0 up by half-time. Havertz caps it off with the sixth in the second half 
probably should have not played a full strength side. While that was happening, Man United decided to go and lose to Leeds in the league, which effectively hands us the title. They're 21 points behind with seven games left, and we have scored nearly 40 goals more than them. The FA Cup semi-final draw pits us against Leicester, and once again, we are the overwhelming favourites of the remaining teams. And we get three players in the next-gen 50 thing, including Timulu Makua, our stranglehold is finally broken, largely due to the fact that we've played fewer games, but you can't begrudge Filippo Inzaghi with those results. Lukaku then busts some weights too hard and rules himself out of the most crucial games of the season, so well done, mate. Bayern Munich were again trying to tap up our players, so we present Kylian Mbappe with an increased paycheck. Our financial status is now only okay, which doesn't sound good, but I mean, by definition, must still be okay, right? The wage bill is probably getting a bit out of hand, though. Anyway, we travel to Old Trafford to face Manchester United. A point is all we need to wrap up the title for the third straight season. And that would be great so we can rest players for the Champions League. Tammy is a more than capable deputy for Lukaku. And how? We press high early on, as we always do, and the pressure is too much for United and De Gea's blind panic gifts him the opener. Mbappe has a goal ruled out for a clear offside as we don't really do much else. We tire in the second half and Rashford grabs an equaliser for United, but it doesn't matter as we only needed a point anyway. The whistle goes and we're champions again. By far and away the easiest one yet, with seven games spare. I really didn't think it would be going this way, but it's another phenomenal achievement. These players this system just really work. And great to see John Terry hasn't changed his ways. Three Premier Leagues in a row is Ferguson standard, but can we emulate his treble? If we can actually make it past Liverpool, I think we can. It's the home leg first, so we need goals. But what is it about this competition? In the first half, literally nothing happens. In the second, basically nothing some woeful performances. We do have one chance with Gallagher setting up Abraham who does score brilliantly, but we then immediately bin this off with some abysmal defending to allow Gabriel Jesus in. 1-1. One, one. What's more, we have to play Arsenal in between. I'm going to rotate fully because everyone's clearly tired after some over-celebration, but it's not exactly an easy game. Our lengthy winning run has been halted, even if it's only by draws. We take the lead against Arsenal, but we don't keep it, and it ends up how I was expecting. A 3-1 defeat, some disgraceful performances, and the perfect morale boost needed. Good job we've already won the league. And at least it does mean everyone's fully fit for Liverpool. Oh wait, Havertz and Mbappe got injured in the week. We probably shouldn't risk Havertz, but Mbappe and Lukaku I'm going to start. Let's not be terrible. Mbappe lasts 26 minutes. Nothing else happens in the first half at all. Again, some woeful performances. Liverpool come close with Chiesa and then Salah, but we look exhausted even despite the rest. It will take some kind of good fortune. Pulisic picks up the ball on the left, squeaks it forward to Tammy Abraham, who slots past Allison's near post to give us a broadly undeserved lead. We look to hold on, but then obviously Liverpool get a corner with 30 seconds left. Van Dijk hits the bar, and then somehow Tomori gets it away from an open goal. And we hold on to actually win. I'm not sure we deserve that. I'm definitely sure I don't care. Mbappe's out for a month though, and we get Real Madrid in the semi-finals. The FA Cup semi-final, meanwhile, is very straightforward. A Christensen goal sees us through to defend our crown. We'll face Brentford in the final. Is the treble on the way? We beat Southampton 1-0, but lose the edge for the rest of the season before seeing off Norwich 2-0. I obviously fully rotated for those two games to ensure maximum fitness for Real. We're a bit depleted out wide, but let's see what we can do at the Bernabeu. How about an early goal? Pulisic finds a fit again Havertz who slides in Lukaku to do what he does best. 1-0. Madrid have a great chance to equalise but Traore's effort goes wide. It's all them though and an unstoppable pile driver from Tony Cruz draws them level. It's an action packed game. Vinicius Jr misses a sitter before Pulisic hits the post. In the second half, a perfectly weighted ball from Kante finds Kai Havertz, who strolls through their defence to restore our lead. And that's that, a narrow but excellent away win. Advantage us. No award again, but I really don't mind because we've got business to attend to in the run-in. The treble is there for the taking. I rest the first 11 for a trip to Newcastle and we lose, which is just great again. It's fine because basically that's the last game where we'll definitely need to fully rotate. And then Mendy twists his ankle. For God's sake. If we inject him, he'll probably miss the rest of the season, but there's a slim chance if we don't, he'll be back for the Champions League final. Of all the players, I've generally been playing Freddie Woodman instead of Kepa, and I'm not sure who's really better. Kepa should be, but think of how many times he's let us down. I'm backing Woodman. 
and we make a great start to the second leg as some totally static defending allows a simple tap in to draw Madrid level in the tie. We need a response and Ben Shilwell races down the left to fling across in for Hudson Doy to smash into the top corner to restore our advantage. Shortly before the break, Woodman justifies his selection with some extreme composure to set up a move that results in Lukaku making it 2 1. 4-2 overall. In the second half, Lukaku is filtered out to the right-hand side but can just still whip across in for Havertz to score. 5-2, we're in control. A quick Madrid move allows Traore in but he hits the post. And then we go down the other end. The fresh legs of Holzek in behind their defence allows hudson Odoi to tap home another and seal our place in the Champions League final for the first time in the save. What a performance. Unfortunately, but inevitably, it's an English team we'll have to face in the form of Manchester United. We finish off the league campaign with a 2-1 win at Brentford, a 3 one win over Everton and a 3-0 win over Sheffield United, meaning we end with 101 points, a full 25 points clear of Liverpool in second. It's the same tally as last season but with one more extra win and two more defeats. 112 goals scored is also considerably better off than last year too, and as said, unlike previous years, it was basically never in doubt. Perhaps surprisingly, Rhys James wins both Player of the Year awards. I basically don't mention enough how immense both fullbacks are, so full credit for this. Lukaku wins the golden boot by a country mile, my mantelpiece is even fuller and we so, so nearly sweep the team of the year once again, which I don't think we'll actually ever do because it's always a 4-4-2. We tie Lukaku down for another two years as he becomes our first 400k a week player. Also, just to say Timo Werner had a great debut year in Munich, but for some reason only signed a one-year deal, so he's already agreed to join Atletico Madrid on a free transfer. Well done Bayern, but despite the awards being given we're obviously still not done yet as the treble still has to be finished. Brentford are up first at Wembley. Mendy's not fit still but everyone else is here. We have an early chance as Mbappe is through but he smacks the woodwork but we win a penalty and Lukaku isn't going to miss. Reece James then bangs a free kick into the top corner for two before Onyeka gives Brentford a way back into it. Christensen converts the corner though to restore the two goal cushion and Mbappe then makes it 4-1 to surely put us out of sight. Lukaku taps in a fifth and Abraham grabs one himself in the final seconds to complete the route. We win again and deservedly so. Double secured once more, but still one more thing to do. I mean, we did win the Community Shield, so it's already a treble of sorts, but we want the proper one. And I suppose what better club to win it against than the only one to do it in the Premier League era? And the great news is that Mendy is back for this biggest of occasions. Is this the perfect end? We, as we so often do, dominate the start, overwhelming them across the pitch. Mason Mount has an early sniff before we get a corner and Kai Havertz heads home. I mean, who else? We work a typically beautiful move. Chilwell crosses low and it's on a plate for Lukaku who makes it two. Mbappe has a chance for three before he goes on a brilliant run and Havertz's effort is flicked in by Lukaku. At half-time, United haven't even had a shot. We get a penalty and Lukaku seals his hat-trick. Reese James gets injured, Kante gets sent off, but such is the advantage, it doesn't really matter because we're just too good. It's the Champions League final and we won 4-0. I really have no words. The treble is secured. A quadruple, really. Just ridiculous success across the board. I honestly expect it to be sacked by now. What more can you really say? Our team of the year is as you would expect. Lukaku gets our player of the year after a 53 goal season. Mount again tops the assist chart. Callum hudson gets young player. Bafflingly, Jorginho is still in the overall best 11 though. A cracking campaign from Tammy as well with 25 goals. The board explicitly wants us for the first time to win the league again next year which fully ratchets up the pressure. But why wouldn't they? We won it three times in a row. The stadium expansion plans are this time confirmed with an extra 16,000 seats to be added to Stamford Bridge, which would take us to 57,837, which would be really awesome. But there isn't really anything we haven't done at this point. Obviously, it'll be interesting to see if we can maintain this, but I'm conscious of this becoming a bit repetitive. So let me know what you would like. Keep this going as it is. One video for each full season every few weeks. Stop here and start the East Anglian journeyman. I don't know. I want to keep this going because it is a lot of fun, but I'm just not sure about its total longevity. Whatever it is though, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.